Okay, I grew up in Chicago, all right, in Crook County. All of Crook County put together doesn't even have as many signs as the Rio Grande Valley does. It's fucking truckloads of signs. And then what do you, I mean, what do you do? I'm just focusing on her because she looks like a drag queen. I happen to like drag queens. Okay, I appreciate them. All right, not a sex thing. Just, you know, appreciate, appreciate having them around. Okay, but she's not even that bad. I mean, this isn't even that bad. They got fucking hundreds of these signs everywhere up and down the streets, truckloads of them. And then the office only lasts for what, two, four years? You know, and then you got to get more of them. It's crazy down here. They got more signs. They're so into the fucking uh, local politics. Everybody wants status. So there was there was a Sclepius prostrata, the prostrate milkweed recorded here, I don't know, 10 years ago. Someone gave me the points for it, came and checked it out. Turns out the lot's pretty degraded. You can see they plow through it. It's all fucked up. Uh, but you still got a lot of remnant uh, native vegetation. And you get some pretty interesting shit, too. You can see you got some hotropha. Okay, which, uh, Euphorbia, see, Atrofa dioica, they must just come back from tuberous roots. You got your Karwinski right there, that very poisonous member of the Ramnaceae. You got, uh, you got, of course, Parthenium. And, uh, you got this weird bastard, Tetraclea culturae. Lamiaceae, the mint family. Okay, you got your opposite leaves and you got those stamens just so prominently exerted outside of that beautiful damn Corolla. No, very noticeable calyxes too. See, look, look at a calyx on there. Okay, that was when I first time I seen this was seeing the calyx. Oh, look, he looks like he got some maturing ovaries in there as well. He also got this mean bastard, Sencra spinifex. Okay, my dog especially hates it. Look at those fruits. Look at the fruits on there. Texas's meanest native grass. Fuck this plant. So we're here in Zapata County, my, my, you know, we're, we're both, uh, hazards to be on the road because neither one of us is, uh, looking at the road, you know, we're rubbernecking. And we happen to find a, uh, federally listed endangered plant right here, Dimophila pephroluca, a member of the marigold tribe. Why don't you just, uh, flip it over? Look at those orange glands. Oh my god. Okay. Smells pretty nice. Smells pretty good, like many members of the marigold tribe, the Gidee. You can see those orange glands in the involucre. It's a woolly bastard right here. Just on the side of the road, coming up amongst the buffalo grass, holding its own. <clears throat> I don't know why the fuck this plant's so rare. Okay, there's herbarium records going back to the 60s of this thing being collected here. And I got it at San Antonio, the Botanic Garden. But uh, you can see it's just, uh, you know, it could be a victim of mowing. They do love to mow here in Texas. You give a man a reason to use a gas-powered uh, machine of any kind in this state, and they'll take it. But, uh, you know, this guy, he's still still doing good. He hasn't been mowed down yet. So we're going to collect some seed. We're going to, we're going to, uh, oh, did I just say that on the camera? Never mind. I mean, we're not going to collect seed. We're going to, we're going to consider collecting seed and herbarium vouchers to a session. But we're not going to, we're not going to actually do it, Okay. Because you got red tape and you got a bunch of fucking knobs who will uh, snitch you out for doing Here we go. So you could see on the other side of the road, we were just, uh, you know, crawling around the bushes over there. Now we're on the other side of the road over here. Okay, beautiful Zapata County. Okay, a couple miles north of San Ignacio. You got the this to make dissectus. Okay, the this to make. This to make. Okay, convolvulaceae. Very, uh... Very uh, notable fruits right there. It like, looks like a little wooden rose. Just a member of the uh, Ipomea family climbing up this fucking uh, tree over here. Looks like an Isenhardia. And you got more of that Thymophila just on the ground. Just coming up. See, these are already done. Look, tons of seed right here. Okay, which you shouldn't collect because uh, there's all that red tape, right? Okay, don't want to break any rules. Don't want to do any, don't want to break any rules. Okay. But uh, you get you get your yucca constrictor too. Oh yeah, a lot of nice plants. Not a lot of nice habitat and a lot of fucking buffalo grass too, which is kind of a drag. But we're not gonna let it bum us out because uh, the thymophila is doing pretty good. The ashy dogweed. Okay, why is it so ashy? Because it doesn't use the moisturizer. Got to got to get some userin. All right. Tried to get them to sponsor me, but apparently they don't like. Uh, Foul mouth salty botanist, so <laughs> I don't think I I don't think I apply to their product demographic too nice.
There's, there's more of the ashy dogweed. See, just coming up on the other side of the fence, which, of course, you know, I, I would never trespass, so I'm not going to go over there and get more money shots of it and, uh, you know, inspect it up close nice. See, they, look, you got the Buddha Lua, too. The eyebrow grace, because it's... See, it, it's not good. It's better when it's actually flowering, but it looks like the little... Uh, the eyebrows that the uh, that you see on a Spanish soap opera is on, a, you know, the women on a Spanish soap opera is on Telemundo. Does that look nice? Except they'd be black in that case. But, you, you know, that's how I always remember the Boodaloo. The eyelash grass. Look at that ashy dogweed back there. You got some croton. Might be croton dioica. Look at the undersides of this, uh, these leaves. Looks, uh, looks silvery, like some uh, bad polyester clothing from the 70s. Looks probably a bunch of little scales. Trichomes and scales doing that. Croton, there's a million crotons in a, in Texas, though. It could be hard. And then over here, you got... It's too bad it's not flowering, because this, this is a showy bastard when it flowers. Fabaceae used to be in Cesalpinia, but now they moved it into Erythrostemon. Erythrostemon caudatus. Okay? And this is kind of a shitty specimen. I'll show you more on the other side of the road, where the, where the, uh, the ashy dogweed is still flowering. But uh, pay attention to those leaflets in that nice blue color. And if you get up close, you may not be able to tell on this one, but you got the glands. Do you see the glands on the stem? It's a, it's, it smells like, uh, it's kind of pungent. I don't know if it smells good. I kind of tend to like those nasty plant smells, though. Oh, fucking mesquite and everything. I love this habitat. Now, see, on the other side of the fence that I didn't just hop over, you got the, a beautiful specimen of the Ancestral Cactus. Ancestral Cactus Shirii. Look at those hooked spines, those hooked central spines. You got a bunch of radial spines. Remember on Cacti, I got central spines and radial spines, uh, you know, it's coming out those aerials. And you got kind of a brown coloration down towards the bottom. This, this is a beautiful bastard, you know. I love to get them in flower. Look, it's coming up on the sand. Sandybags.com. Kick me into sandybags.com. All right, hopefully they just fire a warning shot if they see me out here. You know, they don't they don't aim directly at me. You could see the grasses have uh, really invaded. They're really <laughs> little little tufts of little mats of buffalo grass, which of course if is is uh, invasive. You got a handful of sprinkling of native grasses too, but it's primarily the buffalo grass. It seems at least seems to be fucking up uh, most of the habitat. Yucca constrictor right there, which is uh, getting coalescing. It's getting some stem to it. It normally doesn't have that. You know, normally, it seems like it's just the lower-growing uh, yucca, at least primarily when I see it. But sometimes you see it with some stem. Over here, we got a member of the uh, crucifixion thorn family, which, again, is misleading. Because, it, you know, that name can refer to, you know, five different unrelated plants. But in this case, I'm talking about the member of the Sim Sima rubaceae, the Castilla genus. Castilla emorii we get in the Mojave and Sonoran deserts, of course. Beautiful bastard. No leaves at all. Stem photosynthetic. Gets 12 feet tall. And uh, it's, it's quite rare, actually, but easy to grow from seed. Uh, this one uh, you get in Texas. You can see the underside of those leaves. They got uh, they got some hairs on them. Nice uh, little uh, indumentum of fuzz down there. And again, it's got those uh, spinescent branches. Okay, it's like little spines. You're not going to be gnawing on that. Red fruits when it's got the when it's putting the fruits out. You get two species down here in Texas: Erecta and uh, Texana. Or Texas, whatever the fuck, you know, it's, Texas is the species epithet. Look, even a damn, uh, the stem on this is fuzzy. It's a fuzzy stem! See, this is the first thymophila I've seen when you get away from the, uh, the first ashy dog we'd ever seen when you get away from the fence. So they're kind of starting to taper off. So they're thriving more closer to the fence line over there. All right? Which is, I think is quite interesting. You know, I, I've noticed that about a lot of plants here in Texas. They kind of thrive in disturbance. They like, uh, you know, or maybe the fence line protects them. I don't know. I'm just pulling stuff out of my ass. You know, I tend to do that a lot. <laughs> At least when I'm, you know, but still treat it like a theory. I don't treat it like it's the truth. I still just, you know, guesses as to how, wild guesses as to how things behave. Okay, because you don't know. Oh, no, there's, see, there's, there's more ashy dogweed. Ashy dogweed, you know, until you actually study this stuff, you can, you know, and, and look closer at it. Uh, until you uh, fuck around to find out 
is they say, you know, you're just kind of guessing. I would love to just find a nice big mat of Asclepius prostrata out here. Not going to happen, especially since it's so dry. But uh, there's more that time out for it. Hey, she dogweed. Nice member of the uh, citrus family over here. Oh. Oh, yeah, you could smell it coming off those. Oh. Remember, they got those pellucid oil glands. Oh, yeah. Xanthoxylum. Those fruits. And then look at the look at the skin on those. You could see the little oil glands on the skins of these fruits. Looks like a little berry. Looks like citrus fruit, right? Doesn't it? Like an orange peel. See those glands? They got the glands. But, you know, the, uh, the uh, foliage stinks too. I like it, though. I like nasty plant smells. It's just me. So back on the other side of the road where the Dimophila is still blooming, you can see it over there. We got uh, another uh, cool Xeric adapted member of the Asteraceae. We got Tetranurus scoposa right there. Okay, notice those leaves, con duplicate leaves, so they're folded and they're kind of fuzzy. They got the fuzz on them, little indumentum. And then, of course, there's the scape, scopocious. <laughs> That's not really, it's not a word. I just made that shit up just to be obnoxious. But uh, anyway, there you go, little, just, uh, just little yellow uh, daisy flowers when they're blooming, you know. But to me, since I love composites, you know, I think it's pretty remarkable. Got a nice little uh, woody, uh, it's a uh, sofrutescent. You can see it's got more like a, it's got this little woody uh, stem that holds it up. Okay, the seeds look like they almost, uh, they already blew away. Hey, maybe not, maybe I'll try and get, uh, get some of these growing. Okay, just crouch down on the side of the road like a meth head, you know. <laughs> you never know what's going on with people, okay? Everybody's got their own story, isn't it what they say? Anyway, here's another uh, species of milkweed vine, Sinancum. See the little follicles. Opposite leaves, and then, of course, if you pull one of those off, you got a little bit of latex bleeding out of that stem. The tiny bastard. I should wipe that off. Tons of good shit here. You know, dry season... Not much is blooming, but there's still a bunch of good shit. You got your Heterotheca subaxillaris right there. Okay. Glandular, old boy. All the fucking composites are blooming in uh, in late summer, early fall, you know? A lot of them got that uh, mucilaginous uh, texture in those vessels inside, you know, in, in, in their plumbing, which helps, of course, and in their leaves, which helps, of course, to, you know, hold on to that water. So they're not, they're not transpiring too much, and they're just covered, and look at that. Glistening, glistening in the sun. Camphor weed's the name of that. It smells like uh, something you'd put on your ass if you had, you know, if you pulled a uh, groin muscle or something. Okay. Okay. You ever, you ever get ass pain? No, I'm not talking about like hemorrhoid ass pain. Maybe you just you've been doing your Brazilian butt workout in front of the TV. Again, you know, you get they get the muscular pain. You know, like uh, Tiger Bomb. You ever convince your friends to put that on their scrotum? When you were uh, in junior high, maybe it was fun. Anyway, uh, there's that uh, Tetra nursing. I just love those leaves. Okay, this this guy should be growing up. Be nice in containers. Some rocky containers. Here's a uh, got that Euploca confortifolia. Barrage, a tiny barrage. Look at it. All those woolly, woolly little uh, bract-like leaves. And of course, you got the you got the Goliad formation. All these uh, tumbled shirts. This one actually looks like it's been worked, and you find that a lot. You know where there's little chips. I mean, it's I don't know. You know, sometimes it's it's hard to tell. But uh, look at that edge, sharp as all hell. It's basically just silica. You get all kinds of cool shirts and jaspers in this uh, region. You know, and all of them, of course, none of them sourced locally. Not locally sourced. All right, brought down over the last, you know, 100, 200,000 years by the Rio Grande. Okay, so uh, a little bit closer to a uh, beautiful Laredo, and I'm only being half facetious when I say that. I rode through Laredo about 15 years ago. I actually caught a train north out of there. I crossed the border legally and then met up with a guy who'd crossed it illegally. Really nice guy named Luis. He was, he, actually, you know what? No, he had his papers. He was doing, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Anyway, we had a nice run. 
okay. It was before shit really got hot with the cartels down there in Mexico, and it got pretty violent. But none of that shit uh, here nor there. Uh, anyway, we're on a nice rock outcropping now, and we got a real nice, uh, formerly in the genus Camasite, now in the genus uh, Euphorbia. Look at that! Look at that! Those nice red glands around that the uh, Cyathium, HotCyathia.com. Beautiful. Beautiful foliage too, waxy and blue. You got your nice, uh, looks like sandstone. Looks like we got some sandstone. But uh, there's also some gypsum on it. We got uh, we got some gypsum going on. Which as you'll know, see just looks like, uh, looks kind of like a salt crystal. As you'll know, you can make the drywall out of that. So maybe we'll post up here, you know, get some uh, sheetrock contractors out here. Hopefully they don't fuck it up when it makes it. Look at that. A anyways, I was going to say, as you know, the gypsum causes uh, plant the speciation as well. You get a lot of gypsum endemics, okay, especially in Nuevo Leon, uh, right in the Sierra Madre Oriental over there, okay? Beautiful mountain range in eastern Mexico. And if you look at it on a topographic map, uh, you know, you'll end up doing some maps debating because... Uh, it's really a lot of compression there, which I think is mostly late Cretaceous. I mean, you can see the mountains are folded. It's it's honestly one of the most spectacular mountain ranges I've ever seen. Tons of cool agave, rare cacti, etc. And, uh, you know, you've got these beds that were laid down flat, and then they're just now they're flipped up completely vertical, and it makes these kind of step habitats for these these uh, plants to grow on. A nice uh, tequila conescence. Okay, not flowering. I don't know why I'm showing you all this shit. Nothing's flowering. Isacoma, Coronapifolia. But, uh, you know, what we're really looking for is some more uh, rarities. Okay, some of the nice, uh, maybe that, uh, the ashy dogweed. We'll see if it's here. We're only a couple miles down the road from where we've seen it. Who knows what the little botanical gems await in the uh, Tamalipan thorn scrub? Got tons of leucophyllum everywhere. That's always a pleasure to see. You can see it's just starting to go off. Oh. Look at that. Scrofulariaceae. With those beautiful uh, silky gray leaves. You like it when I call things silky? Silky ass? I think they call this Texas sage, but it's uh, in no way related to sage. I mean, it's in the same order, but it's <laughs> it's not saying much. Look at that massive, massive brick of chert. You got tons of tequila everywhere. Euploca, that little guy. This kind of looks like peyote habitat, but... Uh, we're not looking for payos today, we're looking for uh, the ashy dogweed. Okay, here we go, another another uh, plant with the uh, common name of a uh, crucifixion thorn. This is Cobra linea spinosa. We're, we're at about the eastern edge of its range here. Its distribution kind of parallels the southwestern edge of Texas, going through the Big Bend country and on into New Mexico. Okay, this is actually an order of mustard, if you believe that, the brassicales, and it's, but it's in its own uh, family. A monotypic family, Cobra lineaceae. No leaves right now. It's got leaves when it's young. Then it drops them, and then it just photosynthesizes through its stem. Okay, and again, no relation to the other plant I showed you. That's uh, you know, commonly called the uh, crucifixion thorn, the Castilas. Okay, this this is perhaps a more appropriate name, and it's a mean bastard. There's the fruits right there. Looks like a little a uh, little droop. There's another one. Okay, we're talking pain. All right, how much would it cost to get you to run into that naked? I don't know. I'd probably do it for 10 bucks, you know, just just for some laughs. Just, you know, just for shits and giggles, as they say. Nice and woody stem in there, too. Beautiful day. Right on a Rio Grande. Beautiful sunset. It's like a cocktail, just real, real, just calm you down, okay? Even, even when you're getting a little excited because you just found a new population of a rare plant and it's got a fruit on it. So you could take it to your friend who's then going to take it to San Antonio Botanic Garden to grow it out because it's on the verge of extinction. How about that? Nice, uh, rare milkweed.
You know, I see I was I was walking around and I seen the sand and I said, boy, I should go check over there because there's, you know, probably some unique plants. Anytime you get a change up in the soil and sure enough, uh, you know, here it is. How about that? Nice little euploca there too. How about that? Oh, yeah. You guys know where the taco palenque is? Huh? What are you doing over there? You want to get tacos with me? Look at that, over there, you got uh, my favorite mountain range in the distance. My favorite mountain range in North America, the Sierra Madre Oriental. Monterey, Mexico's over there somewhere. Tons of good plants there, tons of good plants. Tons of cool agaves and weird cacti and just crazy composites and wild shit. Anyway, there you go. Hope you learned something from today, okay? It's too bad those uh, car cars didn't want to go get taco pee with me, but fuck it, what can you do, you know? Not everyone's into your flavor. That's all I got for you today. Uh, have a good uh, rest of your night. Trying to be a prick, go fuck yourself. Bye.